Hello everyone and welcome to Advanced Pro University. Today we're going to be looking at picking location functions in Advanced Pro. This refers to a physical location where you might be putting your stock in Advanced Pro and it allows you to know where an item is located within your warehouse. When receiving, you'll know where to put a product away and when shipping, you'll know where to go get it. Uh, you might have heard this called bin numbers or location numbers in other situations. Now, if you have any questions through this presentation, feel free to use the questions panel on your GoToWebinar window to go ahead and ask them, and we'll be addressing any questions that we can at the end of this presentation. So picking locations are a very important way to simplify and speed up your picking times, as well as to train your employees. So if you're spending any time looking for product around your warehouse, this feature is going to be a good fit for you. So today, we're going to be covering in detail specifically how to create picking locations, how to use rules around the picking locations and how to create them, and how to do regular advanced pro operations when using picking locations, how it changes picking and packing, how it changes shipping and receiving. Okay, so moving to advanced pro, uh, this is all enabled by coming into the admin panel, coming to utilities, and coming to MPL, which stands for Multiple Picking Locations. You're going to check off that Enforce Picking Locations inventory to get all these other settings you will have to save. You may have to log out and log back into Advanced Pro to get all of your options. So uh, if you have multiple warehouses, you're going to be able to apply them to just apply your picking location rules to just one warehouse or to all warehouses. Now, a couple other things we can do here. We'll, we'll talk about the second level settings in a moment. Well, let's talk about creating a picking location and the rules around that. So we're going to come here to MPL level settings, first level. Go ahead and click Manage MPL. So this is your multiple picking location manager. So from here, we can choose a warehouse that we're going to be putting locations into. We can provide a picking location name. Uh, and we can also create some rules about how these locations are going to be used. So if you only click shipping, that means you'll be able to ship out, but you will need to transfer any product into that location before you'll be able to use that location for shipping. If you also click receiving, this is kind of a normal picking location situation. You, you've got a, a situation where you can receive stock into that picking location, and you can also ship it out. If you click receiving only, you'll have to transfer it to some other location in order to ship. So all you'll be able to do is receiving and transfers out of your picking location to some other picking location. With a storage type location, that means you can neither receive or ship into that location. It's a good way to put some stock aside, and the only way to take that stock back out is by transferring it to another location. You'll also see we have the option to make a temporary location. And here you can go ahead and put in an expiry date to go ahead and make this location only available for a certain amount of time. At the end of that, it will go ahead and put that stock out into a zero location point where you may choose to write it off. But this is going to allow you to control your locations by expiry date. And that way you can actually use it to create a picking location logic in terms of how it's sequenced to put product away into, as well as to take product out of for shipping. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as we go. If you click the zero stock option, that just means that the picking location will vanish as soon as stock is taken out of it, as soon as you hit zero stock in that location. Now there's a, a reference or tag field that's available, and this is actually a sorting tag. It's one of our many sorting options that you're going to have for picking locations to make sure that they're sorted in the right order. And finally, just some notes so that if you're looking at your locations, you'll know uh, why that location exists. So what I recommend for your picking location's name is you might want something that you can scan. So here you'll notice that we've just done alphanumeric codes and we can turn these into barcodes. That way as you're putting product away, you can scan the shelf where you're putting the product and then scan the product into it. Uh, also, if you're taking product out, you'll be able to scan that shelf and take the product back out. Now, now that we've actually gone ahead and you'll, you'll add that location, it gets added to this list and you'll see there's icons for receiving and for shipping, 
or for storage or, or temporary, what the expiry date might be, uh, and the warehouse that this location exists in. What you're going to do is you're going to click that A button. A stands for associate. So this is where we can associate product with that particular location. Now you'll see there's the enabled locations, the, the associated locations for a given product. There's also the default location. So you can think of the default location as that product's home. It's the first place that product should go. The other eligible locations might be another place where you put that product, but it's not the main location. It's not the first place where that product should go. So that's how you can think about these enabled locations versus default locations. Now, you can also choose products that, to associate by location by product. And we'll jump back in there to show you that. So here, we can actually, once we've chosen a warehouse, we can set by particular SKU or by product name. We can find that item and then associate it manually for a default picking location with that product. Now, your default, in general, unless you set other rules, will be the first location where Advanced Pro will try to receive those goods in, and it'll be the first location where Advanced Pro will try and remove those goods when you go to pick. Okay, so now uh, that we've kind of gone through the creation and a basic association of product with picking locations, let's come back up. Let's talk about the second level logic. So this is about creating your preferences. There's a couple pieces of logic here. The first is this setting the MPL sequence. So this will say we want to sort it to, to go first by uh, a manual sequence. If we choose manual, we're actually going to be able to click and drag these around to set our sequence of the order in which the products associated with these locations on a pick ticket or receiving ticket will be ordered on our pick ticket. So this way, we can set this order up, whatever order we specify here, will be the order in which we pick or receive. So if you think about picking this way, you can set it up so that you're moving logically through your picking locations, going to location A, then location B, then location C, and you can change that order around using manual or using reference tag. So if you go by name or reference tag, it is an alphanumeric sort based on the name or based on the reference tag for each of your locations. And you can also set it by expiry date. So then you can go ahead and, and start dealing with first expired, first out methods of, of sorting your picking locations so that uh, you'll be going through and picking your orders based on their expiry. Now, if we come back out to just the MPL section in utilities, we can then set preferences for where we should receive and preferences for where we should pick each. So we talked a little bit about how they should be sorted in terms of their ordering on the pick ticket. This is actually going to tell our, our picking ticket for the VPO, for the vendor purchase order, whether we want to use that default or maybe we want to sort it through some other means. So quantity ascending, lowest first, quantity descending, highest first, based on the, the first picking location that contains that product that uh, is going to expire first based on the name alphabetically or based on the reference tag alphabetically. And likewise, the first place where you want to pick from. These might be different. You might be, want to be receiving into a different location than where you're picking. So you can set these rules up and apply them to each of your warehouses. So you could have a different set of rules in each warehouse about how these are going to work. Now, uh, one last thing to mention is if you have locations set up, you can always click that E button to bring up the details of that location and make changes. So that covers a little bit about creating them. Uh, as you're creating a new product, by the way, if we go into View Products, we can click E to go ahead and associate that product with an MPL. And that's done here under the Additional Info tab in a product as you're creating one or from View All Products. And you can go to MPL Settings and Assign MPL. And that will just allow you to choose your default and additional picking locations. So now that we've, we've talked a little bit about setup, let's talk about how this is going to affect your customer orders when you're receiving, or customer orders when you're picking, and vendor orders when you are receiving. 
So if we go to a customer order, we go to our orders to pick, we open up that order. Each item will show its default location or the location where the stock is available for this order based on your settings. So here it's telling us where we can pick. Now if we want to pick from some other location and we know that that stock is in that other location, we can click on that picking location in the pick ticket to go ahead and open up a panel where we can choose to pick from some other location. So you'll see each of your locations will be listed here and you can say what your quantity that you'll be picking will be. In this case, there's only 11 in one location and I'm picking one. So that discusses just a little bit about how th this affects picking. And if we were to print our picking ticket, it will show our picking location on that picking ticket. On the receiving ticket, if we head over to orders to receive, it's going to tell us the correct destination in a very similar way. So here it tells us where we should be putting it away. And if we click on that, I'm going to go ahead and, and enter what we're receiving. If I go ahead and click on that, it's now going to let me choose to put it in some other location based on what's associated. And since it's a little bit different than picking, because in picking you can only pull from places where you actually have stock. Here, we could theoretically put this into any location. So I can go ahead and associate it with a new location and then add the stock that I'm receiving to that new location on the fly. That covers just a little bit about receiving. The last thing I want to touch on is inventory adjustments. And there's, there's two ways that inventory adjustments are affected when you're using picking locations. For the first one here in, in Manage Inventory, you'll now see that there's a picking location column. So this is going to show you where the majority of your stock is for any given item. Now if we make an adjustment, we won't be able to adjust below our picking location amount. So we'll have to take it out of the location, then make our adjustment. If we want to from this location, you'll see we can also perform transfers between picking locations here. So we happen to have about 10,000 units in picking location CA1. If we want, we can choose some other location. So we pull our from location, our to location, the amount. If we're dealing with lot or serial numbers, we can associate serial numbers at this point, and we can provide a reason for that transfer. And we'll have a paper trail to that transfer. The items will then be associated with that new location. So that touches just a little bit on making those adjustments. There's also our multiple adjustment area. We can click on that and if we start to do a positive or negative adjustment we will now have picking locations available accordingly. So if we want to do a negative adjustment here it's going to have us take it out of our default location. If we want to do a positive we'll be able to put it into our default location. So that just talks a little bit about our different ways of transferring and adjusting stock when using picking locations. Uh, this does conclude our tour of the picking locations feature in Advance Pro.